Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to run a capacitance and power factor test along with an excitation current test using a tracks with a TDX120. Let's get started. To get to the power factor app from the home screen, you will need to select the apps option. And under the power transformer tab, you will need to select the TDX tan delta slash power factor app. So this is what the power factor app looks like. There are several options on this. Let's go over all of these options. Most of these options are common to other apps as well. So you'd see them uh, when you switch over to the other apps. Here we have the shortcut to the home screen. If you want to view the test report, you will select this option. This is the shortcut to the apps screen. So if you want to exit the Power Factor app and switch over to some other test, you will select this one. Here you can view the test settings. You can select this option to view information on the tracks, which would include the temperatures of different components inside the instrument. This is what you would select to weave the uh, diagram for, for making the connections for this particular test. Select this option to save data. Select this option to create a new test. Select this option to delete test results. Select this option to weave the narrowband DFR curve. You can select this option to add notes or comments. Here we have shortcuts to some other tests, which includes a tip-up test or an excitation current test. Select this option to start the test. Before running the test, you will need to enter some information relevant to the test. You can start off by selecting the vector diagram. Here you will need to enter the rated voltages of the windings of the transformer. You will need to enter the test temperature. Uh, make sure that you enter the temperature accurately because power factor is temperature dependent. Here you will select the test voltages and the frequencies. Now you wanna make sure that the test voltage that you're selecting is less than the rated voltage of the winding that you're testing on. When, uh, when power factor testing is done on power transformers, typically the test is carried out at 10 kV. But if you run the test on a transformer which has a winding, which has a rated voltage of less than 10 kV, then you need to adjust the test voltage appropriately. Now, some of the information uh, associated, with, associated with the transformer, like the rated voltage and the vector diagram, uh, would, would carry over if you ran uh, another test prior to this, like a turns ratio test or winding resistance test. Um, then information that you had already entered when you ran those tests would carry over to the power factor app. So you don't have to enter that information again. This is the test section, which shows you the test data. So here you can see the, uh, the insulation tested, the test mode used, test frequency, voltage, current. Uh, you can see the capacitance, uh, power factor uh, at the test temperature and the temperature corrected power factor, you'd be able to see the temperature correction factor applied, the losses, uh, the VDF, it's the voltage dependence factor. So this is the screen that will come up if you select the test settings for the power factor app. Here you can see this noise suppression mode. The noise suppression mode selected here is frequency variation, which means that the instrument will run the power factor test at a frequency which is slightly off from the line frequency. By doing so, it prevents interference from, uh, frequency, from line frequency noise. If you wanna see the results recalculated to 10 kV, then you will select this option. Here you can select the display type. You can choose between power factor, dissipation factor, or tan delta. Here you can select the temperature correction method. Uh, you can use the individual temperature correction, which the TDX offers, or you can choose the generic temperature correction factors, which are provided in tables. 
Here you can choose which parameters to display on the app. Here you can set the limits for power factor. Based on where the values stand with respect to the limits, the colors uh, will change appropriately. Here you can select the uh, test frequencies for the narrowband DFR measurement. To insert the high voltage cable into the TDX, we need to pull on that tab, insert the cable until we hear a click. There are three connections that run between the tracks and the TDX. The first one that you see here is the auxiliary power cable through which the tracks is able to power the TDX. Second connection is the shielded Ethernet cable through which the tracks controls the TDX. Third one is a ground wire which can connect, which can be used to connect the grounds of the tracks and the TDX. You also need to plug in the red measurement lead into the TDX. To perform high voltage tests with the TDX, we need to connect a second interlock. The interlock can come in different forms. On the transmer, we are going to start off by shorting the bushings of each winding. So here I'm shorting the bushings on the high voltage winding. The first set of measurements are performed from the high voltage side. So you would need to connect the high voltage cable to the high voltage winding. The two types of terminations that you get with the high voltage cable are one is a hook, the other one is a clamp. So here I'm going to use the hook. So the next step is to short the low voltage bushings or low voltage terminals in this case. You also need to make sure that uh, none of the windings are grounded. So for example, if you have a grounded neutral, make sure you um, isolate the neutral from the ground before you uh, run the test. The next step is to connect the red measurement lead to the low voltage winding. In the power factor app, I'm going to enter the test temperature. It's important to enter the right temperature uh, to ensure that the temperature correction is done accurately. Also, if you look at the play button, you will see that it's yellow in color and that's because the second interlock is disabled. When you enable both interlocks, the play button becomes available. Then you can start the test. It might give you a warning based on how high of a voltage you're applying. Here I'm just going to proceed ahead and here you can see that it's running the first set of measurements. Uh, the, the first set of measurements uh, include a GST ground measurement, GST G measurement and a UST mode measurement. These three measurements are being done from the high side which means that the voltage is being applied on the high voltage winding and the current is being measured from the low voltage winding. At each measurement, you get the capacitance value and the measured power factor value. You can see that the frequencies are slightly off from 60 Hertz. Uh, this is a noise suppression mode, which is called frequency variation, where the test set applies voltage at a frequency which is slightly off from the line frequency so that uh, 
any any interference any chances of interference from line frequency noise uh, are eliminated once it's done with the first set of power factor measurements it starts off with a narrowband dfr measurement the narrowband dfr measurement is done from a frequency of 505 hertz uh, to 1 hertz so in this frequency range uh, multiple measurements are taken and from those measurements the narrowband dfr curve is plotted. Uh, from the narrowband DFR measurement, it's possible for us to determine the exact um, individual temperature correction factor, which can then be used to uh, to determine what the temperature corrected power factor values are. So the moment you can see that two columns in that test section are empty, one is for the correction factor, the other one is for the temperature corrected power factor values. Once the narrowband DFR measurement is completed, those values will populate. You can see that the power factor values are uh, colored and these colors are as per where they stand with respect to the test limits. So the values are populated, the measurement is complete. I'm going to save the measurements and when I hit the graph option, you can see the narrowband DFR curve here. After finishing the first set of measurements, I'm going to swap the leads. So the high voltage cable will now go on the low voltage winding and the measurement cable will now be connected to the high voltage winding. Whenever you uh, step out to do connections on the transformer make sure that you disable the interlock that's important for safety so now we are going to start off with the low voltage uh, power factor measurements i'm going to change the test voltage here to 250 volts because we're going to be testing on the low voltage winding which is rated for just 480 volts so i'm going to select the low voltage measurement rows and i'm going to hit the play button so it's going to run the three measurements from the low voltage side, it's going to start off with the GST measurement. You can see that the frequencies again off, uh, slightly off from 60 hertz. This noise suppression mode is called frequency variation and it helps in eliminating interference from line frequency noise. Second measurement is in the GSTG mode. So by using these different test modes, the TDX is able to measure the capacitances of different insulations that exist inside the transformer. That includes the winding to ground insulation and the interwinding insulation. If you look at the CHL and the CLH values, you'll see that they are similar or same. That's because you are testing the same insulation essentially. I save the test data that concludes the power factor test. Now that we're finished with the power factor test, I'm going to take off the connections. For the excitation current test, we need to remove the shortings from the bushings. Also, any point, any terminal on the windings, which is going to be grounded in service, needs to be grounded for the excitation current test. The excitation test is done from the high side. So you energize each phase and measure the excitation current. Since the high voltage winding is a delta connected winding, you would need to ground the third bushing here. So to test the A phase, I'm going to connect the high voltage cable to H1. The red measurement cable goes on H3. Since the A phase lies between H1 and H3, then I'm going to ground the H2 bushing. On the track software, what we'll do is we click on create new test 
and then select the excitation current symbol over there. So that opens up the excitation current app. We need to enter the right test voltage. It's typically done at 10 kV, but if you're testing a transmer, a winding which has a lower voltage, you, then you want to adjust the test voltage. You do not want to exceed the rated voltage of the winding, or the rated phase voltage of the winding. Also make sure that you test at the correct tap. Here we're gonna be testing at the nominal tap. So I've selected the A phase row for tap three. I'm gonna hit the play button. It might give me this warning. I'm just gonna proceed ahead. And it's gonna apply the voltage across the A phase. You can see that the voltage has built up to 7.6 kV and I get the measurement for my current there. So that concludes the measurement on the A phase. To test the middle phase, I'm gonna connect the high voltage cable on the H2 bushing. The red measurement lead will go on the H1 bushing and I'm gonna ground the H3 bushing. So let's move on to the B phase. So we made the connections. I'm gonna hit the play button. It's gonna apply the voltage across the B phase. 7.6 kV is applied since the rated voltage of this winding, the rated phase voltage of this winding is 7.62 kV. The current is measured. Now to test the C phase, I need to make the connections between the H3 bushing and the H2 bushing. So the high voltage cable goes on H3, the red measurement lead goes on H2, and the H1 bushing would be grounded. The points where you make the connections would depend on the vector group of the transformer. So this can change depending on the vector group. If it's a Y-connected winding, then you might need to make the connections between H1 and HO instead of H1 and H3. Now for the C phase measurement, we made the connections and I'm gonna hit the play button here. It's gonna apply 7.6 kV and I'm gonna measure the current. Typically what you see is a high, low, high pattern you might get a different pattern, but that needs to be consistent and you should get comparable values when you test, uh, when you repeat this test over uh, regular intervals of time. Right, I'm gonna save the data and to view the results, I'm gonna click on the report icon. Here you can see the excitation current values. And above that, you can see the power factor test values along with the narrowband DFR curve. This concludes how to run a capacitance and power factor test along with an excitation current test using a Trax with the TDX120. Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.